Uh, if we want to talk about the bad points, I'm probably going to need about another 10 minutes here because um, I'm about to sound off. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> Recently, Broomy and I did a video about his VF and some of the good and bad points. Pretty honest review, I thought. Yep. Caused a little bit of, uh, you know, a bit of sting with some of the Holden fans. It was and a pretty, pretty honest, honest review, but, you know, some people just don't like negative if it's something that they've got themselves. But this guy seems to be pretty optimistic about Holden returning. That's the first I've heard of it. You say this is the last commie, but nobody talks about how they are going to snatch the workers that worked on the VF. How are they snatching them? <laughs> to make a new team with the old crew, getting the community and the people to back up with money. A good car should be kept alive with the help of the community. What? And we give it back to you. HSV owned 50%. They own 50% of Holden, do they? Apparently. So if the people buy out the 50% left from GM, the V8 can still live with the backing of the people. The people. Not that it matters. Someone else will take this joy and make it their own. It's just a matter of time. I think the people, the thing that a lot of people don't realise is the sheer volume of cars you need to sell in today's market to... To be profitable. be profitable. Like I heard someone told me, like you're talking 400,000 globally of a car basically to sustain its life and that ain't happening anymore. There's too many there's too many makes and models. You know, oh, back when we grew up very a lot, yeah. You know, you had two or three big cars, that was it. Now you've got, you know, eighty five SUVs. And you've also got the um the big powerhouses out of Korea. You've got oh, these yeah. uh, countries that didn't really have any skin in the game, although were tiny, they didn't really long story short, local manufacturing is dead. And that's not a that's not a good thing to no, say. I mean, we're spewing. Imagine the Falcons and the Commodores now that would, would have, you know, you you got to think you'd be you'd be a whole other model, if not two models down the road, yeah. another decade of LS power. So we're going to install this now on our VF, and it's a pretty uh, non-complicated process. It's a case of one, two, three, four, five clips. You get this here, and you flick that over there. So you get the lid off, and we'll. Just place this in here, and it's pretty much as simple as that. Did you initialize the ECU with the new filter part number? So you put the filter part number in the ECU, do you? Yeah. The car needs to know the filter has been upgraded or it will run lean. I see nothing about filter prep either, no filter prep. You might as well have put it in backwards and get the same result. Is this guy, I think, is living in the 1980s? Like, doesn't really understand how modern EFI works? Check the jets. 58,000. Like, it just has one locked-in parameter, and that's it. What about the timing? Hang on. If it sees 1% more, more air, it's cooked. Well, go fuck yourself. Cool. You're talking about detonation straight up. These new-age computers are very high-tech. A car doesn't drive by itself. Have you ever had to initialise a new car part? It's some serious undertakings. Is this where they're sticking the right co part number into the into the computer, into the mainframe that talks to the VF? Gee, the uh, the old VF's getting a bit of loving in this episode. So you, you upgraded we up, you upgraded the brakes on Broomy's car, just to some new Bendix items. What do people call it an upgrade? Seriously, who cares if the rotor is one millimetre under spec? Most drivers who daily drive, it would not make a scrap of difference as their brakes would not even get hot. In fact, most people wouldn't even know that what brake fade is and they wouldn't even push their brakes to the limit. Standard factory brakes are fine for daily driving. Oh, don't use rotors that are under spec. Your car is unsafe, blah, blah, blah. I don't think that's a real uh, account. It's got to be a... Bench talk trial. I think he's just trying to get his uh, comment in here. But if it was real, I mean, this is that's a sort of uh, like you'd want to be buying a second-hand car off. He's a bench oh, detail. We found his car. Haven't you seen his car? No, there's no need to change the brakes. They just live on forever. You know I got no brakes, no brakes. Into the void. Another rear end slide. See that video I did with Marcus from Speed Pro about his killer XD. 
Unreal. Went up there, ran right. a seven. First Fr meet straight up. Yeah, straight up. Hey, so, hang on. It didn't run a seven. Didn't it? High sevens? I wouldn't call a seven second car to be fair. So low sevens, mid sevens at best is fair to call it a proper seven second car. But that's just my opinion. Did this guy pass some um, grade one mathematics or what? Yeah, I think he better go to the Olympics. Just just the time measure. Speak to speak to Usain Bolt. Hmm. He he ran what high nines? High no, nines. he didn't run high nines. High he nines ran tens. No, he ran tens. Tens. Yeah, but it, high nines are not nines. I see this, they're, they're these tens. comments all the time. Like if you run a point nine, you know, say seven point nine, it's not a seven second pass. It is, mate. It's less than eight seconds. Like in all seriousness, they don't understand drag racing at all. No. Never no. been to a drag race. So it's a seven seconds if it's low or mid. As soon as it gets to the high, it's logic. If you run like a seven one, you can turn around and say you got a six second car. Because it's pretty close, isn't it? Close enough. It's actually a fair call. Why not? I got a six second car. Now Ford Australia came out. Australia. Australia. And they've got a new model called a Mustang R Spec, a hundred thousand dollars, limited run of five hundred. So it's a similar price to an entry level HSV. Already sold out. So Ford are building them in Broad Meadows. This is Melbourne, Australia. They, they put a they put a supercharger on them. Engine output goes up to 522 kilowatts, 830 newton meters of torque, which is huge. That's a pretty lethal car on the street. Why would you buy it when you can just buy a second-hand Mustang and put a blow on it? Be cheaper. Just get an 86 and put it on E85. It does show you that people want to pay for a fast V8. Look at that. That's sold out straight away. Why would you buy? I mean, you can just buy a BA, spend a couple of grand on it, you're done. You just get, get gapped at the highway. I don't want anyone buys any of these new cars. When you could buy an XR6. Have you seen Tesla are killing it at the moment? I read yesterday that their, uh, I think their stock value is massive. It's gone, I think, to number two is the behind Toyota, Toyota or Volkswagen. No, I think they, they just went above Volkswagen. They're behind Toyota. They're a long way behind Toyota, but Toyota is. Huge, just on huge. They, they sell so many cars. They have no... Um, Tesla really have no competition, let's no. be honest. They go on about things like Nissan Leaf. But overall, come on, Tesla have no competition. You wonder whether in 10 years, you know, that might change. What's well, saying here, they're talking about making a $25,000 Tesla Model 2. That'd be... Uh, that, that's where the market is. You've got to get that interest. Yeah, look, that, that's a that's a Mary, uh, US price. But that'd be like, imagine getting a Tesla 70, here that costs... Right here. Imagine though, if I say it costs forty grand, which is yeah, that's still the thing is that's still expensive. You got to compare it. You got to think you can get a small car in Australia easily for twenty grand, twenty five grand. You can get a good car, right? New car, mm -hmm. like a Mazda Model Three or something. There's nothing even close that compares to that for an electric car. But it was just saying about how you know if they they were talking about making this car that would be built for China and the amount of models they'd sell and. It could earn Elon Musk $37 billion. Billion dollars. That is some serious cash. But we're still waiting to see these electric cars come down until they do. Aren't they releasing the truck in the second half of this year? I think that truck was going to... They are going to release that truck. What about that Roadster thing? That's going to wipe all. Yeah, that was going to like own everything. When was that coming out? No, I'm, cool. I'm keen to see if the, the Rivians, the Rivian trucks... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they got big cash injection from Amazon, didn't they? I think. But they're cool because those, those, they're like a full-on decent-sized pickup truck. And it yeah. kind of has that retro styling. The flat front and everything on it. Yeah, it looks a bit better than the old Cybertruck. It has side mirrors, but... Um, that thing actually has, well, serious tow rating. Like yeah. Like proper off-road stuff. Yeah, that's cool. So if you haven't seen the Rivian, check that one out. Saw this article. Man wins 48 grand refund battle over unacceptably loud hot engine in Holden V8. Now, of course, you read it thinking, oh, this idiot thinks his car's too loud. Doesn't yeah, like the sound of the course, V8. Of course, it's, uh, and of you'd, course hear, you'd hear that thinking as, it's way too loud. Of course, it's total clickbait. You are fake news. It's just really about there was too much piston slapping and Holden said it was normal. In other words, stock LS. But anyway, apparently they did some testing themselves just to see and they proved exactly that far too loud. Apparently you've got some uh, underground footage of that as well. Well this is the video here. Did you see in Canberra, I think it was, 
that if you're of a certain religion, you don't have to wear a bike helmet. But if you're not of that religion, I guess. You get fined, what is it? $344 for cycling without Oh, one. that's in New South Wales, I think. In, in Northern Territory, it's $25. <laughs> the fine? For the same offence. We're one of the few countries in the world where you actually get fined for not wearing a helmet. Mm -hmm. Other people are like, if you go to Europe, they just laugh and go, this is ridiculous. I don't, I don't understand why religion plays such a big part in laws. Isn't there just one law for everyone? Like, mm -hmm. if you shouldn't, if you don't want to wear a bike helmet, I don't think you should have to, really. No, I think exactly if you... I mean, I, I, I wouldn't personally ride a bike without a helmet. I think it's no. pretty stupid, but... I mean, people drive seat, cars without seat belts and... Yeah, but you'll get fined for that if you get caught. 100%. But will you get fined if you're of a certain religion, not wearing a seat belt? I mean, to me, that's the same flame of logic, isn't it? It is ridiculous. Like, At some point, common sense and safety has to overrule basically political correctness. That's what it is. Mm. What do you guys think? Now, did you see in Japan... What are they going to do here? It says it doesn't expect the country's road toll to be affected by the highway speed limit increase. They're going. Hey, 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 hey. What, what, what? Increase? Two of these major freeways, it says major expressways in the country's east, are going to go from. They're going to increase from 100 k's to 120. That's huge. That would be unheard of here. Well, in actually, didn't it happen in the Northern Territory? Unrestricted speed areas, road toll dropped, but people were going to have blood on their hands, according to all the. Um, road toll experts and, and the they, they, they brought it back in they, I think they they brought it back down to one third yeah down. No, and it's back to one third it's, it's all gone because the road toll there was, there was no evidence it says here it was unsafe it says even though the posted speed limits say 100 kilometers an hour it says Japanese drivers regularly exceed it by a significant amount and lifting the official limit to 120 is merely adjusting it to what the public has already been doing for years. So that, what that's, Common sense. That's commonly referred to as, what do they call it, the 85 percentile rule? Yep. So effectively, you're making rules around what 85 percent... And they've done that. I, I remember do. seeing it in the States. But they observe, say, a road. in Texas. Yep, they observe a road and they just mark down what people are doing and, and they'll get an idea of, okay... People feel it's comfortable to do, say, 80 kilometres an hour on this road. We're going to move the speed limit from 70 to 80 or something mm. like that. Instead of saying, oh, you're speeding 10 k's over and everyone's getting done. Well, the logic is if you've got 85% of people, say, doing 80, but the speed limit's 70, so then you get a few plonkers who just won't, you know, go near that 70. It's effectively, ma you're creating a traffic jam. You can create, yeah, it's e that, easing congestion. That's what happens on in Australian roads. But that, nothing will ever happen here. I, I've actually just accepted that. It'll just go worse and worse. Worse and worse as I get older. A few months or a few years, you'll have politicians from each side just spouting rubbish about, you know, when they're not in office, the the road tolls rubbish, and then when they're in office, it's um, fantastic work, isn't it? And then you've got absolutely ridiculous campaigns like, what is it, what's the slogan? Towards zero. Ab yeah. Absurd. We're going to have zero road toll. Yeah. When you're handing a you know license out like um, biscuits, I mean, lollies, I should say. Um, you would think reducing travel times and increasing alertness on the road would actually mean something, but never going to happen here. You try and tell people that, like, if if you drive faster, say, on the freeway or the highway, you're actually more alert. They're like, what, what, what? Like, these people would have never, mm. ever driven past the posted speed limit. You'll see all the sheep will comment, people can't even do the speed limit now, there's no way they should be driving quicker. You know what? They should never license. Get off the road. Is it just me or do we talk about this every week? <laughs> the reason, a few people complain we talk about it a lot, but it's in the news every week. Yeah, I know. Who in this, who in that? Uh, Roads, someone was caught this, speeding 0.3 of a K over. And then they're going about speed and then they'll show some horrific accident where some dropkick has done, you know, 150 over the limit, taken out poles, split a car in half and go... Speeding was a factor, and you go. And how's that relating to the dude doing mm. sixty-two in a sixty zone? Of course, it was a factor. You so know, was being a complete dickhead. Yeah, there's speeding. There's inappropriate speed. Like, yeah, it's just this blanket rule. But I think it's good. A lot of uh, you know the general population's woken up to the fact that it's just complete rubbish. Gotta lick them boots.